there was more. Yes, his topic today is industrial equipment reference data sets, um, a review of structures and utilities. So great. We look forward to hearing about it. We can see your presentation. Jens, take okay. it away. Good. Thank you. Uh, thank you for um, inviting me to speak to you today. Today, I will give a brief presentation about work that people who know me would normally not associate with me in engineering space. Um, I'm involved in this because I'm one of the principal investigators on the ARC Center for Transforming Maintenance through Data Science. And I will be presenting today on behalf of my colleagues, Yu Zhao, Zhao Yun Yun, Dong Min, Belinda Hotkovich, and Tyler Bikan. And um, I want to talk to you about industrial um, equipment reference data sets and our review of their structures and utilities. Um, I don't think I need to tell you why um, semantic interoperability is something useful and what knowledge organization structures are. Um, what I want to dive into a little bit today is our, how they are being used in equipment maintenance and um, what, what, the, what the lay of the land is and, and what we're wanting to use them for. So um, after a brief introduction, I will look at, the, at them from the perspective of engineering standards, from the perspective of hierarchy equipment coding systems, and from the perspective of open source knowledge bases. Um, so in uh, equipment maintenance, um, there are lots of processes happening across organizations. So there's a, a life cycle running horizontally through the organization. Um, where if you look at mining, then there's, it starts in minerals exploration, there's the development of the mine, the operation and maintenance, and also marketing and sales. They all have their systems sitting next to each other in their silos of excellence, but they need to interoperate. And at the same time, there's also this vertical integration of the corporate perspective onto the operation into the um, divisions and eventually down to the pieces of equipment that need to be controlled and maintained. And if we want to move towards smart manufacturing, we need to have a much more intelligent way of linking between those. Um, it's just having this as human knowledge and human communications isn't enough. We have to have the machine support and machine support needs semantics. So um, we looked at a long list of um, standards that exist that we found on the internet and literature research. And this table gives you a little bit of an overview that there's um, a variety of, um, of um, structures. Some are just lists, you have taxonomies, terminology, lexical databases. So more and more organization, um, thesauri and ontologies. Um, and later on, I will show you a bit more about how those are presented. But this already tells us that there are different levels of, of structural maturity, as you might call it, if you want to have more than just a list of terms. So in engineering standards, what we define them as existing standard models that relate to process plans, manufacturing, maintenance, and electrical transmissions, because that's what we were interested in in, in mining operations. And um, there's a couple of standards that relate to process plans and electrical power networks. There's some things around smart buildings, which the, the market themselves as building smart. Um, then there's very useful um, dictionaries from manufacturing, especially from automotive and aerospace. They're very advanced in that. And then uh, industry reference data libraries and dictionaries also from ISO. And this is a very, very busy table um, that lists the, those standards. And what we then looked at, we looked at um, who developed them for what purpose how are they codified? What do they describe? How many classes 
are there, and it's anywhere between two and 11,000. And then and how many levels are they organized and when were they last revised? Because the last revision also tells us something about whether there's any active community involvement in um, developing them further. Then we have hierarchy equipment coding systems where um, hierarchy already implies that there's a bit more of a structure more than lists. And they are um, standards of classifying equipment with coding in hierarchical systems organized from, from a top uh, level perspective with a specific purpose in mind, but um, potentially quite useful for what we have in mind um, for, for um, organizing maintenance because they're nicely structured. Um, we looked at three of them, the harmonized system of the World Customs Organization, which uh, certainly is very much in use, um, the common procurement vocabulary of the European Union, which is also very much in use um, and more detailed than the World Customs Organization and even more um, detailed, very much more detailed is the Electropedia um, of the International Elect Electrotechnical Commission, which with 22,000 concepts. And um, they are then also, um, as is, because they're hierarchical, organized in several levels. The interesting thing though, is that the um, application space is very broad. So the harmonized system of the World Customs Organization, even though it has around 5,000 codes, is there any, anything? in any, anything that goes through customs. So in terms of in what we might find useful in maintenance, um, it's only a small fraction that actually is useful. Same in um, the procurement vocabulary with its 9,000 terms. Most of them are not applicable to, um, to um, equipment maintenance. But Electropedia then has plenty and you can describe everything in quite fine detail. And then we have the open source knowledge bases where um, what we were aiming for were publicly available knowledge graphs. And there's ConceptNet and Wikidata that we looked at in more detail. Um, ConceptNet is a knowledge graph which um, occasionally gets um, released in a new update with um, 1.5 million en entities encoded in it. Um, it's mainly used by natural language processing and linguistic researchers, computer vision researchers and engineering researchers. And then there's Wikidata, which is um, extracted from Wikipedia, um, used, used by researchers and engineers with more than 100 million entries. So the very rich um, knowledge bases that we can use for, for our work. So what is this work about? Um, in the Center for Transforming Maintenance through Data Science, we have a project on knowledge organization with the cute name Koala. And um, this project is about information extraction and reasoning to support industry decision makers. Um, what we do here is that we use natural language processing or technical language processing as a subdiscipline of that to analyze work orders and maintenance reports um, to find out um, what the status of a piece of equipment in the plant is, whether there's need for maintenance or risk of failure. And in, so in this project, we've built a couple of engineering specific tools and pipelines for information extraction um, to display that information and be able to query that. And this is where the knowledge graphs come in because they allow us to traverse across all those documents and find the relationships of things, how they relate to say failure modes, how a piece of equipment is connected to another one. And um, it even allows us to do um, quite sophisticated reasoning towards um, understanding failure modes where the failure of one piece of equipment can result in a failure of another piece further downstream, which then can result in a catastrophic 
cascade of failures and bring everything to a halt. So we didn't want to reinvent the wheel, obviously. So Koala identifies existing equipment taxonomies to augment and organize queries on our knowledge graphs that we built from all this material. So this was a very quick overview of the Koala project. I don't want to stand between you and the tea break. And I'll thank you for your attention. <laughs>